What is going on everybody, Weedle Tweedle here, and we are backing in with another Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's going to be against Gandhi, a person I battle off my Discord server, so if you guys are interested in my Discord server, a place to hang out and find Wi-Fi battles, a link will be in the description to all who are interested in that kind of thing. Now today, me and Gandhi are having a overused Wi-Fi battle, even though we barely have any overused Pokemon at all. We both decided to have a nice laid-back OU battle with no Stealth Rocks, even though I have two Stealth Rockers on my team, neither of them carry Stealth Rocks. But my team looks pretty threatening, I have some Tryhard Legendaries on there, nice Chandler, Mamoswine, and Roserade for some fun, as my opponent's team looks pretty similar, has some fun threats on there, as well as some pretty dangerous threats, and we're just gonna hop right into this battle, I'm not gonna discuss too much about Team Preview, all I noticed was that my opponent had two, two Dark Types and I had no Dark Resistance, so I'm like... Ooh, this is gonna be a pretty tough game. So turn one, my opponent ends up with the big teenies. I ended up with my Mega Aggron. So I'm expecting my opponent to not want to stay in on Aggron because one, I'm pretty sure Mega Aggron can like snack a V create. And two, I just like I'm expecting my opponent to predict my switch into Ladias or the um Chandler anyways, and you turn out of there. So we're able to get that play correctly is now my opponent brings in the Hydreigon or Hydreigon. I'm gonna go for the heavy slam here just because I wanted I expect them to go for U-turn. <clears throat> So I go for Heavy Slam, as he actually reveals to be Zoroark instead of Hydreigon. <gasps> he got me there, but now I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to really switch into Black Hole Eclipse because most Zoroark are Z move because Z moves kind of catch people off guard, and then Zoroark's disguise catches people off guard. So having both and one Pokemon is kind of scary to think about. But yeah, Zoroark is going to go for the Z move here, and uh, yeah, it's gonna go for the all-out pummeling. It looks like due to freaking Gandy's character punch in the air. And Mega Aggron is spadef with the unfilter um, ability, but this is all out pummeling. Like, this has like 200 base power. Like, it's really, really strong. And even though my Mega Aggron is really, really bulky, I don't think it's going to be able to take this attack. But you never know. My opponent's going to go for all out pummeling, as Mega Aggron is actually able to snack it somehow, but that just shows how bulky Mega Aggron truly is. Now, this Mega Aggron set isn't Stealth Rocks or anything like that. It's actually a really, really, uh, interesting set i mean i would say interesting but it's actually garbage so basically one of my subscribers wanted me to make a set based around block because you know arena trap got banned so now you have to use block to trap people well or magnet pole so i decided to give mega aggron block because it can set up on a lot of physical sweepers that decide to stay in on it or just physical pokemon in general and yeah you can get a few curses up and then just wreck havoc with heavy slam but it did not work out for me in this battle at all so Definitely a strategy that isn't good and I don't recommend you use. It's very, very, very situational. Even if you get it off, like Mega Aggron can still be O code, so definitely not the greatest move pool or just moveset I've created in my time. But hey, you gotta have some failures. You get you get some genius strategies, and then you have your failures. Like it happens. Like don't feel bad. So we bring in Tornadus here, We're gonna go for bulk up and a superpower here, and Lucario is unable to tank a superpower at full health. So Thankfully that Lucario wasn't Focus Sash, because I do have a Focus Sash um, Reversal Lucario, which is pretty damn threatening actually, when used in the right hand, so I'm glad he wasn't that kind of set. So now my opponent's going to bring in Victini, and I'm like, Victini's probably going to go for Bolt Strike or U-Turn, so I'm not trying to stay in here and tank that attack, so I bring an Ice Climber here, expecting the Bolt Strike, and we're able to get that play correctly. That was very risky because my opponent could went for V Create there or something like that, but we are able to get that play correctly. Now the Victini is most likely choice because we saw U-Turn earlier on in the game, so now my opponent's going to bring in the Ditto because I guess my opponent has no switch into the Mamoswine for good reason because Mamoswine's coverage is absolutely ridiculous. There's not much I can switch into it in the game, but I'm going to go for the Substitute with my Ice Climber because I am a Substitute 3 attack Mamoswine. And yeah, the Ditto is just going to break my sub with the Earthquake, but that's fine. We know the Ditto is locked in Earthquake now, unless he's just winning a speed tie against me. But most Dittos are choice. Though I have ran a Focus Sash Ditto before, and it didn't really do anything, so it, Scarf Ditto is probably the best Ditto set. I would I would love to see someone run a Salt Fest Ditto. That'd be so mean. I wouldn't do it. I would not do that. But I mean, I would do that actually. It's something I would definitely do. But here. Um, I can easily knock this thing out with Ice Shard because my I know my opponent knows I have Ice Shard because one, I'm Mammal Swine, and two, he sees my moveset. So instead of going for Ice Shard to pick off the Mammal Swine, I go for Earthquake again, just on the off chance my opponent wanted to pivot into the Ice Shard to save his Diddle's life, and we're able to snipe the Victini on the switch, and, and we're just able to obliterate that thing. So that puts me at an extreme advantage at this point. I mean, definitely nice comeback from the all up pummeling Zoroark. And now my opponent's gonna bring in the real Hydreigon. It's currently 5 to 3, so we're currently. I have a decent lead right now. I'm just gonna go for the last ditch effort Ice Shard, though saving Mammal Swine would have been nice for Mega Septile as well, and just for taking off Weakened Hydreigon. Um, I don't know, I decided not to keep it. I probably should have sacked something else off to the Hydreigon, but 
we see that he's locked in a flash cannon because most Hydreigons, if they have flash cannon, they're probably choice specs because who else, why would you run flash cannon without choice specs? That's kind of weird. So I bring in Latias here. I know I can face tank a freaking specs flash cannon. So I'm going to go for the comment here. So my opponent decides to stay in here, which is kind of weird because I know flash cannon is going to bounce off my body. So this is fine with me. But then my opponent reveals to be a mixed Hydreigon with outrage. And I'm like, excuse me? Oh walk out the door you see someone that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand so yeah he just literally obliterated my latias i was not ready for that like i'm pretty sure i could have taken a draco meteor if, after the combine but outrage mm -mm, i was not taking that kind of crap so now i bring in my tornadoes Bring in one legendary to the next. Nice legendary strategies from yours truly, Weedle to Needle. We're able to knock him out with the superpower. I wasn't sure if acrobatics would be able to do it. But yeah, we're able to knock out the Hydreigon as now my opponent's gonna bring in the Sept, the Mega Septile, named after himself, because his name on my Discord server is Sept. So now Sept Septile is going to Mega Evolve, and uh, I'm very afraid of it because I don't really have a switch in the Mega Septile, but I'm pretty sure Tornadus can take any one attack. Like, it could take a Dragon Pulse, it could take like Hidden Powers. But Dragon Claw, I was not expecting physical Mega Sceptile as well. And it almost kills me, but Tornadus hangs on thanks to the Citrus Berry. And the minus one defense drop is almost my downfall. But thankfully, we're able to live the uh, Dragon Claw and we're able to retaliate with an Acrobatics, which is going to do a lot of damage. In fact, I actually knocked out the Sceptile even through the defense, or even through the attack lower. So that's pretty surprising, actually. But that's just the strength of Tornadus. But now my opponent's last is the Ditto at very low HP. And I still have Roserade, Chandelier, and this Tornadus left, so I should be able to win. If he locks himself into Knockoff, I could just bring in you know, Roserade. And if he locks himself into freaking Superpower, he just loses. If he goes for Acrobatics, I should be able to tank it with my um, Chandelier. So either way, we should be fine depending on which move he locks himself into. We're going to bring in my Scarf Chandelier here. Oh! Breaking Benjamin Hole. And we're just going to go for the Scarf Lane Thor as my opponent's going to go for the Acrobatics at minus one attack with an item. And it does absolutely nothing because, you know, minus one attack and it's 55 base power because he's holding an item. Presumptively, I'm assuming he's Choice Scarf because he outsped my Scarf Chandelier. So down goes the Tornadus to the Flamethrower, and we're able to defeat Gandy with a narrow 2 0 victory. So that was a very fun battle, Gandy. This battle is pretty short and fast paced, and I do apologize for that, but we both have offensively based teams, so what are you expecting? But uh, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this Wi Fi battle. If you guys did enjoy the Wi Fi battle and really want to support my channel, let me know by leaving a like on the video, as it is the greatest way to show your support towards my YouTube channel. And if you want to like leave any criticism you have on this video, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I can improve on such as like narration style or like editing or anything that you don't agree with I really want to see your guys feedback because I love reading your feedback it really like helps me make videos better and improve and I just I'm trying to improve as much as a youtuber as I can so any criticism you guys have let me know in the comments below as well as it's just I don't know, anything you guys leave is appreciated, and, and the fact that you guys take time out of your day to watch my content honestly blows my mind. But getting off that topic, the question of the day is going to be, what is your favorite mythical legendary? Just in general, it can be, you know, in competitive viability, or just your personal favorite. Now, you know, the mythical legendaries are Pokemon like Victini, like Celebi, like Jirachi, Mew, G I wouldn't consider Deoxys, though. like Meloetta, Keldeo, Genesect, like stuff like that. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite mythical legendary is just in general now without a doubt my favorite mythical legendary is victini um victini just fire both fire and psychic type are my favorite typing overall and victini is so freaking adorable it just like it's the best like i love victini it's like the only like one of the few legendaries i feel no shame in using because it's just one of my favorites and it's move pool is absolutely amazing it's like very viable and competitive play but it's also has like, many other qualities that make it likable and i really like victini I also really like Celebi. I don't know what it is about Celebi. Maybe it's just the fact that it's like a freaking onion fairy and uh, I just like it a lot. I still think they should have made Celebi a grass fairy typing considering they made Gramble a fairy typing because of its Pokedex entry saying it's a fairy. They should have made freaking Celebi a fairy type because it says onion fairy in the Pokedex entry, but whatever game bring them in, I'm not gonna judge you for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite mythical legendary is for not the entire series. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'll check you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.